So hello friend, this is Rupesh and you're watching CPNet video series on C++ exception series and this is maybe third video where we'll talk about the user defined exception and the essence of using it. So let's directly jump into that. But before going there, let me tell you why you actually need user defined exception handling. Let's create a scenario. You have a, let's say video player or an audio player. You give that audio player some file and let's say that file doesn't exist. You just give a path to that audio player and that file doesn't exist. It's a very simple scenario, right? Then in that case, you would have seen that, okay, this file doesn't exist or some pop-up comes and you get notified, right? It just doesn't crash. I mean, why should it crash or why should it terminate or something, right? It should not. So those things we can handle using exception handlings. So the same thing I'm going to explain with the code also. So bear with me, stay till the end. So this was the scenario. Let's talk about in what cases you should go for exception handling. So first is, I mean, why you should go for user defined exception handling. So first is code readability, because you have a piece of code where you write everything just for the video player to actually function well. But if it doesn't function well in different, different scenarios, let's say this, this, and this, in that case, if you will inject the handling code there itself, it will be a very big and cumbersome to understand. Rather, what you can do, you can actually put error handling code in a separate section or file or something. And from there you just throw. Okay. So whenever you encounter some issue, you just throw and depending on what you have thrown, we will have series of catches and exception handling stuff. So it increased the code readability. Second is better error handling. How better error handling? Actually, if you focus only on writing error handling code, you might put a more meaningful information in that. Whereas if you would have just tried to just somehow handle here itself, maybe you won't consider taking care of errors as much. And if you are using custom error handlings, in that case, you can segregate different, different errors. Like you can channel this into some different error handling portion and this error into some different error handling portion. So it is giving you more room to actually enhance your error handling capabilities. Third is, I mean, we can keep on talking about this because there is no end. So I'll just keep till the modularity and code reusability. So fourth is code reusability. Just pardon my handwriting. <laughs> so modularity, we just understood like we can put things in a better way and reusability is let's say this is error number or exception number one it can happen here but then it is happening here also so in your case maybe you would have just duplicated the handlings at two places but as you are throwing now there is just single place where you can i mean handle the same error without duplicating them so there are tons and tons of use if you go for user defined exceptions. Now let's quickly jump to our topic where I was talking about a video player is not able to get the video file and it is giving exception. So let's see that. So this is your code. It is a fairly simple code. We have a file path here. So this is just a string path to a video file which doesn't exist. So I have kept this dot mp4 also so to make it more relevant. And now we are keeping this file system exist. I'm checking if this file, whatever the path I have given here, does it exist? If it doesn't, then I have my own user defined exception file doesn't exist. I'm passing this message. It is coming here. You can pause this video and try to understand this whole class. Otherwise, if you want to listen to me, you can listen. So the traditional or the good way is to actually inherit from the exception class itself. So this is the topmost class available in C++. So you can consider this as an abstract base class, whereas it's, sort, it's not defined as abstract base class, but you can consider it like that. And it gives you this function. So what function is coming from this exception? You are overriding that and giving your own definition. And it's very simple. You are creating this object, taking this message and returning the same message. And when you catch it here, you can just simply print what is the error. Let me compile this and execute it. It is giving file doesn't exist error. Cool, right? And the beauty is, wait a minute, don't go, don't just pause this or go away. The point is, see, you have this video player exceptions. Now, what you can do is you can have 
n number of exceptions here one two three and like i mean not exactly here one after another doesn't make sense but the point is maybe you have 10 different function calls and in those functions call you can actually throw from there okay and let's say you're doing maybe 10 different things point is you can still use the same class and with different different messages to show it to the user and one is coming in my mind right now is let's say this file exists we are checking if this file exists or not but we are not checking if its extension is .mp4 or .mp3 or if it is playable or it's some .text file you cannot play text file right so if it is a text file even if it does exist it will pass this checking but maybe it will fail some another checking so from there you can throw the exception and instead of actually showing this in a terminal we can use gui object and it can come as a pop-up and you may have to say ok or cancel or something so that now you know you have provided some wrong file and it will tell you that so one message can be file doesn't exist another message can be file is not a video format or it's something else so things like this we can handle using your own custom exception classes so this is the beauty so with this note i will sum up thanks for watching guys bye bye take care i'll see you in the next videos